ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Never FDIC. It is Monday, December 7th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the Miller Lite phone line at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. Miller Lite hold true. Great taste. It's only 96 calories. It is the original light beer. And I'm sure we all had several Miller Lights on Saturday after the loss to Rice. Of course, we're going to get into that. I've got Doc Holliday from earlier this afternoon. We're going to look ahead to Charlotte and look back at this Rice game. But let's um, let's start getting it over with right now. Let's start rubbing some salt in the wound just to, to get past it. First of all, Marshall ranked 15th at the time. 20 nothing shutout at the hands of the Rice Owls. This was Rice's first victory over a nationally ranked team since 1997. And because of that effort, Rice now claims the Reveal Suits National Team of the Week honor for the game. They share the honor with Coastal Carolina, which all of a sudden, according to social media, Hurt fans became big fans of. I think that was the one bright spot in a many a Hurt fans weekend was Coastal Carolina, and I'm with you right there. Uh, they were fun to watch, and BYU getting beat. And that was fun to watch, too. But Rice, National Team of the Week. Here's some more. Sorry, I have to do this. This is, um, this is not good. But also, you know the linebacker that was really good, we told you about, Blaze Aldridge. Ten tackles, one interception, one pass breakup. He was named Conference USA's Defensive Player of the Week for his honor. So right there, sorry, more salt in the wound. And uh, I know we're going to get past this together. I'm here for you. But these are some of the things that have happened because of it. Now, Rice will enjoy the game. Rice will enjoy the victory. Marshall, no time to worry about the loss because Charlotte, the opponent coming in on Friday, the announcement made by Conference USA, while we were on the air on Saturday, the announcement came down that the game between FIU canceled. Again, COVID-19 has plagued Conference USA and college football. So Charlotte, the opponent, Charlotte gets beat on Sunday. So they're... They get beat. They have two losses now. All Marshall has to do is win, and Marshall is the East Division champ. All FAU has to do is win, and they can be co-champ, but conference championship representative will be Marshall in that scenario. So Marshall has to win. If Marshall wins, that's it. That's going to be the ticket to the conference championship game. And Doc talked about that. And I know as disappointing as the Rice loss is, as disappointing as the loss has probably made you feel, there's still an opportunity to play in the conference championship game. I'll take that. I'll take that. Opportunity to win the conference championship I'll take that. And then you get to go to a bowl game. Here's the here's the honest assessment here. It didn't matter if Marshall would have remained undefeated as far as what the bowl situation would be. Because right now, teams like Cincinnati, BYU, and Coastal Carolina are higher on the pecking board. Higher than Marshall in regards to getting a shot at one of those access bowls, New Year's Six bowls, one of those big games. Those teams, those programs have the better shot, the better resume, the better opportunity. If Cincinnati keeps on doing what they do, they've got the best shot. If Coastal Carolina can stretch, reach out, catch up with them, they've got the opportunity. And 
I don't have to worry too much about watching immediately the college football playoff selection rankings because Marshall's going to be out of that as well. Marshall's out of the top 25. Marshall's going to be out of that. But watching it just to see which team is going to get a little bit more love. Cincinnati, Coastal Carolina, BYU, how far will they drop? But at the end of the day, the only thing lost here was the national ranking, which will not impact the bowl. As far as I'm concerned, that's up in the air. National ranking is is impacted. Still can win a conference championship. Can still win the East Division. Can still get to the conference championship. Win the championship. And if I told you early on in the year that, hey, you know what? Marshall's got a freshman quarterback, and Marshall's going to lose one game and still win the conference championship, you would have taken that. You would have taken that immediately. If I guaranteed you that, you would have taken that and ran with it. But as it is right now, Marshall came out, played a bad game. It was a clunker. It was terrible. And they know it. Those kids know it. The coaching staff knows it. It was a bad game. And there were many reasons why the herd did not look like the herd. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on with Doc Holliday. So we've got his comments, his reactions. And I actually asked him about all the noise. Because there were a lot of herd-on-herd crimes being committed on social media on Saturday. A lot of herd-on-herd crime. Everybody had an opinion. And that's good, though. For one reason, that you have a fan base that's passionate and actually cares about the team, and that's great. If it was complete apathy, nobody cared, I mean, that would be terrible, to be quite blunt here. If you had nobody really caring and just, okay, yeah, they lost, that's terrible. But a lot of crime, a lot of herd-on-herd crime, a lot of fingers being pointed, a lot of people upset, a lot of people mad. Time to put that behind you, and I get it. You don't want to lose the rice, right? You're nationally ranked. You don't want to lose the rice, and you don't want to hear that they're actually maybe a pretty decent team and had maybe a better game plan, maybe had a an opportunity to exploit some things about Marshall and took advantage of it. They won the game. And so we're going to hear from Doc Holliday a little bit later on just to get his scout of Charlotte because that's the game heading into the week that we're going to talk about. That's the game now. Rice pretty much after today is over. Uh, For these players, they want to get back on the field and they want to get the taste of of that game out of their mouth. And I'm sure Grant Wells wants to get back out there. I mean, yeah, he had a terrible game. 18 of 35, five interceptions, 165 yards. You have five turnovers, you don't win the game. Plain and simple. Five turnovers, you don't win the game. Talk about the defense. The defense was put in a a pretty bad place, right? Defense put in a pretty bad place. And the defense, I thought, did a great job for the situation it was put in. So we can talk about that. Brendan Knox... 78 yards, lost two, so he gets to keep 76. He was averaging almost four yards a carry. Grant Wells, 165 yards. Receivers, Talit Keaton had 48. He's a high man here. So there are a lot of things we can look at and we can break down, but the one thing is certain, though, there's an opportunity for Marshall to win a championship And that starts with Friday's game against Charlotte. You win that game, you're playing the following week. We'll hear from Doc Holliday when we continue. Later on, Tony Kemper is going to join me. We're going to talk women's basketball. Marshall yesterday started off with a victory over Radford to start the season 1-0. Savannah Wheeler had 25 points in that game, so we'll talk to Tony Kemper about that. Also, some good news today for the Marshall men's basketball team as Tavion Kinsey named Conference USA Player of the Week. 31 points, kids. 31 points, 7 rebounds, 9 of 14. 
career high 13 free throws on 15 attempts. Marshall gets the victory 80 64. Uh, we're going to hear from Tavion Kinsey later this week as we get set for basketball. Thundering Herd in action. Charleston, I'm sorry, the College of Charleston, COC, that game taking place on Wednesday. We'll have it for you right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. But Doc Holiday coming up next. Later on, Tony Kemper. We'll try to get your phone calls in on the back nine of this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Guests with Paul Swan appear via the Miller Lite phone lines. We're presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I want to welcome to the program now the victorious head coach of the Marshall women's basketball team, Tony Kemper. Thundering Herd started the year out 1-0 yesterday, defeating Radford. 69-58 69-58 win over the Highlanders. Savannah Wheeler in that game tied her career high 25 points, and I'm sure she is excited to uh, get the season off with a win and uh, such an outstanding performance. Yeah, she she played well, you know, uh, and, and she likes to play ball. Which, um, so she'll play pretty much whenever you want to lace them up and go. She, she enjoys being out there. So, you know, that, to be honest with you, I think we over, over the years we've, gotten better about where we've added more kids that are like that and i think you know if you were in here um, some of the phone calls that i've had from different people i think um you know they watched the marshall team that played really hard last night and uh you know we we faced some challenges going in in terms of practice time leading into it and things like that but i thought our team really um you know responded well to the stuff in front of them and and we for the first time of the year trying to execute a game plan and how's how's this going to go it went you know i thought about as well as as it could and a lot of that credit goes to that she's an excellent player we're glad she's wearing green but we had a lot of people step off and it's good to get get the year started off with a win what were you most impressed with i I look at the stats just uh, looking how this game went and it's very competitive in the first, second, and third, but when you get to the fourth, uh, for the most part, you outscore them by 9, 20 to 11 there. And uh, just team, it, it looks like just going top to bottom, very consistent and pulling away in the fourth. Yeah, we had a good fourth quarter, you know, and um, some of that was, we. I, I felt like we had some players that were limited minute-wise, you know, some of our experienced players based on just practice time and things leading into the game. So, you know, kind of all along, I was, we were trying to survive it to the fourth quarter, and then, um, you know, you hope to kind of ride your experienced ones down the stretch. And, um, you, you know, that being said, we had we had a lot of freshmen in there. We had a lot of newcomers in there. Um, you know, players like Alexis Johnson, um, who's a sophomore now, but hadn't had a lot of playing time yet. She had, she had a tremendous game. She had 12 points, nine rebounds. And, um, you know, but we were able to kind of pull, pull away, especially, you know, right at the end. and. Um, you know how basketball is. If you learn how to do that in the fourth quarter, you probably are going to have a pretty good year because a lot of these things come down to you know the last ten minutes and how you perform. So I thought I thought last night was a good first step of um, learning what's important um, about how you compete defensively and and how you take care of the ball and execute different plays down the stretch. Have the ball in the right people's hands, and when you get a chance to make a play, step up and make it and. Um, you know, I think if you look at this stat sheet, we did not shoot the ball well. Um, that is not surprising to me because we have not been in the gym. And it's hard when you don't have legs, you haven't been able to shoot much to, to really have a good shooting night. I think we'll eventually be a, a good shooting basketball team when we can get, you know, get our COVID legs under us, so to speak. I think the one thing that really stands out to me is, is you look at the numbers and you know, 25 of 65, 5 of 24 from the three-point line, but – you are really efficient when you get sent to the charity stripe for opportunities there. Uh, you also, even though uh, Radford was 10 of 28 from the three-point line, uh, you were able to hit the baskets when it counted. Yeah, we, we did. A, I, I think we played well defensively, you know, especially when we talk about um, a, a lot of new pieces in there together. Um, I thought we, schematically, we were – we were definitely good enough to beat a pretty good team. 
um, leading off the year, a team that had played already, and they had a couple advantages about that that, um, you know, I was a little bit worried about nerves and different things like that. But I thought we guarded them really well. And then, uh, you know, you're right. I, I think timely baskets, um, you know, you just look at the overall numbers, they're not that good, but we got we got the ones we needed when we needed them. And then uh, a, a, another step that was very helpful was offensive rebounds. We, we were as aggressive on the glass. Um, you know, I think we got 17 offensive rebounds. Um, you know, that was an important stat. We got quite a few second chance points and we had a lot of different people chasing. So made enough plays on the offensive end to, to you know, get us to a point total that when you hold them to 58, you're going to have a good chance to win. Yeah, you look at the hustle stats, um, assists 13, turnovers 9, blocks 4, steals 10. Um, you look at Radford, um, you beat them pretty pretty soundly there. I mean, it, it um, you, know, you can't call another team not hustling, but you look at your hustle stats and you, know, you were all over the place, uh, with, especially with 10 steals. Uh, that says something right there. Yeah, I think our, you know, when you get a chance to see us and when people come here to, to watch us play, we're, we're longer than what we've been the last couple of years, and we're a little bit more athletic, too. And I think that that, you know, Cece May, she's a freshman out of Florida. She, she was in the starting lineup last night. She, you know, her first uh, possession was a defensive possession where she got a steal, and um, she's got a nose for the ball. Uh, you know, and then we have other, you know, Kristen Mayo's that way, too. She's a senior. So kind of, I think we've mixed some more playmakers on that end of the floor. So um, there was times there where, you know, we were tough to play against, and, um, you know, that that needs to be a thing for us. We need to continue to grow on the defensive end, so, um, you know, other people have trouble with it, too, but, um, you know, you're right. We, we caused them some problems with our athleticism and, and uh, just being able to move and, and different things like that. Now, you have an opportunity to really find out what your team's made of, uh, Great opportunity. You're taking on number 11 Kentucky on Wednesday, 7 o'clock. You're hitting the road for the first time this season. It's always exciting to play Kentucky. They're a highly touted program year in and year out. Plus, uh, it's a great opportunity for a couple of your players to get to go back home into Kentucky and uh, you know maybe show off for the home state. <laughs> well, we I think they're home when they're here, but you're right. we got a couple pretty good players from Kentucky, and that. You know, that's an important game for them, and, and uh, I kind of compare it to my days growing up in, in, in Kansas, you know, and it, that's, you watch you watch the Jayhawks on TV when you're a kid so much that that's kind of a dream to get the chance to compete with them. So, um, you know, and I know that Kristen and Sab will be excited. Kia Sibbles um, from Louisville, she's going to be she's gonna be jacked up to go down there and play. So, um, they're, they're really good. They're a top-10 team in the country this year. Uh, they're they're Size is going to be the biggest difference. It usually is. They're athletic. Um, they have arguably the the uh, preseason Naismith or the, the the player of the year in women's basketball, uh, Ryan Howard. Um, so they're they're very very talented and a good basketball team. They came back from they're down about ten yesterday at home to Indiana and came back in the fourth quarter. I think outscored Indiana like twenty two to ten in the fourth quarter to win that game, which Indiana is thirteen. They were 11th last night, and Indiana's 13th. So it's a good basketball team, huge challenge this early in the year. and You know, one that I think is going to be good for us, though. So we need to learn how to handle the, you know, the next step. They're going to pressure us more than Radford did on the defensive end, try to take us out of offense. And that's that's a good thing for us to go through um, because there's going to be some teams at conference play that try to do that, too. Yeah, your conference slate, uh, it's a little light. And obviously, uh, with uh, the pandemic and what 2020 has become, you know, the fact that you got to play a game and you get to play another game and another game, probably the, the bigger story here. But light non-conference schedule, you're staying local, Moorhead State just an hour away for that contest on December 17th. And you, you get into conference, and it's anybody's conference. You really don't have, I guess, a true feel for what this conference is going to look like because no one's really played exhibition, anything yet. We're, we're all finding out as we go. Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're this week, this past week, we our league finally got around to playing quite a few games, you know, and I, I was glad, I was certainly glad. There's a lot of people put in a lot of work to get us the game, and um, I think last night was important for that, for that, uh, you know, for that experience for us. But it, it, our, our league in women's basketball is really, really good. Um, you know, 
I think Friday night or Saturday night, uh, Rice went on the road to Texas Tech and won by 20. Um, Charlotte was basically a one possession game with three ACC schools in the last week, North Carolina, uh, Clemson, and, and maybe Wake. Um, you know, Old Dominion's very, very good. It, 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 top to bottom in women's basketball, it's improved a lot over the last couple of years. And and I, I throw us in that too. I think we're a growing program. I think we're getting better year in and year out. But, um, you know, we're going to have to lace them up and we're going to have to continue to get better. And, you know, it's absolutely going to be a lot, a lot of one possession games in the conference season. And we need to do a good job of continuing to grow so that we're ready to take everybody on. Tony Camper, my guest, head coach of the Marshall women's basketball team, victorious over the Radford Highlanders, 69-58. Back at it on Wednesday, 7 o'clock, taking on number 11, Kentucky. Then you got Moorhead State. I'm sorry, I completely forgot. you got St. Bonaventure as well, and then you've got uh, Moorhead State, and that's at the cam. So you really have several games before you get into conference. Uh, but still, um, not to overlook St. Bonaventure. I don't want any trash talk because I overlooked them. Well, it would not be our fault. That would be your fault if they do trash talk us for overlooking them. We, we are well aware that we go to St. Bonaventure on Sunday. and you, you are right. We don't play as many non-conference games this year as typical. Um, that's kind of across the board. But, you know, I hope that things go well here in the next 10 days. We, we play four games, I think, in 10 days. So um, we hadn't played until last night. And now they kind of come fast here between now and the 17th um, when we play. Moorhead State at home. That's a one o'clock tip. That's the next time, I guess, before Christmas that you're going to get a chance to see us play at home. And uh, you know, we had a we had a nice crowd in here last night. Um, I was wondered how that was going to look, and and uh, as usual, Marshall fans did not disappoint. So we'd love to have you on the 17th. Don't forget cardboard swan, cardboard courier. Is it happening? I get courier in the flesh. I mean, ah, he's right there. Okay. So, it, but there's no need for a cardboard of Coyer. You know, we we get enough of Coyer the way it is. I know you do too. Uh, no comment at this time. <laughs> no comment at this you're, juncture, you're a sir. Politician now. Um, I didn't know you were a politician. I I have to I have to deal with that guy. You know what? Yeah. Jason Coyer is the best, and he does a heck of a job for us. He does. I, I would agree with that. He does. He's a he's my favorite part of some days. I could understand that. I could understand that. He cares a lot about women's martial women's basketball, and I appreciate that. You know, he he's covered a lot of different programs through the years, and he he knows our league well. You know, that's probably something that you don't even necessarily know that about him and what he does about women's basketball here. But he uh, he he knows. He's keenly aware of the teams that are good and the players that are good, and the coaches and different things like that. So. Um, when he when he gets done with football, he slides over with us, and he's a he's a big part of what we do. So um, I know you work with him closely, and, and so do I. So he's he's a good one. Let's not inflate his ego any further, okay, Coach? Um, well, come on, yeah. Now. Let's just let's just you dial know. it back a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> That's all true, you know, for the most part. I know, I know, but we have to work with him. So let's just dial it back just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, he has to work with me. Yeah. You know, oh, oh, there you go. Sure. Yeah, that's that's a good point. See, I have I to. Think wor- you have to work with him. Yeah, yeah he um, he can make my he life has to work with me. Yeah, you see, you can make his life miserable, but he can make my life miserable. So um, that's right. I can see the that's power right. dynamic it's here. A little triangle. Yep. Tony Kemper, my guest. Uh, hey, it was um, good talking to you. We'll do it again soon. Uh, we've got a game on Wednesday for you, and then uh, there is a road game on the thirteenth, and. Uh, that means uh, plenty of opportunities for Tony Kemper back on the radio. Well, let's hope we keep playing well, and we got some good stuff to talk about. So we're growing, and and uh, you know it's good to get a first win. It's always good to get the first one under your belt. And now we got some things to work on. We're going to show them, and we're going to get after it here, uh, pretty much right now. So headed downstairs to practice right now. Good luck. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. And if you know what, if you don't want to talk to me, I'll get you on Zoom. So either way, you got to talk to me. Hey, either, I'm fine with either one. <laughs> good, good to talk to you. Thanks, sir. Tony Kemper, head coach of the Marshall women's basketball team. we got more on the way. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Never miss a moment of The Drive with Paul Swan. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.
We're presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Marshall not having a good go of it on Saturday against Rice, and we're still feeling the after effects of that one. Got to move on now, taking on Charlotte, the opponent for the Thundering Herd on Friday. The game going to be televised nationally, and of course, we'll have the broadcast for you right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So, Doc Holliday, we're moving on. We will recap a little bit of that Rice game, but... Charlotte's the opponent. Here's Doc's opening scout on the 49ers. As, as well, we've, you know, we've prepared for Charlotte once, and uh, so we've already got uh, ahead of those guys on a short week, which is a good thing, and we were able to get going here on uh, yesterday uh, practice-wise on those guys, and, of course, we'll get ready to go here again. But that quarterback is very similar to the guy that we played against middle. He gives you a lot of issues with the way he can run the ball, and, and uh, when things break down, he's like the guy middle was that uh, he gets better. And uh, so that being said, it's going to be a great challenge for our defense with him. And offensively, we got to get back to doing what we did the previous seven games. That's taking care of the football and executing the way we know we can execute. So got to get better this week and uh, looking forward to, to playing here on Friday. So an opportunity here to take on Charlotte, win the East Division, play for the Conference USA Championship. But to do so, you got to have a short memory. And that was a question asked of Doc. Do... Everyone does. Everyone on this team have to sort of like be like a quarterback. You, you have a bad game, you got to go right back out there and go at it again. And Doc thinks so. Well, there's doubt, no doubt. You know, and uh, end of the day, I mean, you know, there, and I talked talked to Grant about it uh, the other day. I mean, you had a quarterback named Chad Pennington around here a few years back that was a pretty good quarterback through six interceptions his freshman year, and he turned out to be great, maybe one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play here. So, Grant Wells is going to be fine. Uh, he's a he's a great quarterback. It's played. We wouldn't be where we are without him. Those first seven games would be in seven and zero, oh, and he'll bounce back this week. There's no doubt in my mind about that. And, and uh, our kids are looking forward to playing this game because they're not real happy with the way that last one ended up, and uh, that's a good thing. Grant Wells was eighteen to thirty five, five interceptions, had one hundred and sixty five yards. Marshall was shut out. He was sacked three times, so picked off five times, sacked three times. He had a long day out there. After the game, as I mentioned earlier in the opening segment, lots of herd on herd crime. Social media, wherever you go to to voice your displeasure, wherever you go to have an opinion, the post game show, wherever, lots of herd on herd violence, because there were lots of people who were not happy, upset dejected, just so many emotions here. Some people were negative about Doc. Some people were negative about Coach Cramsey. Some people were negative on the players. So many varying opinions. Some people were positive. The entire spectrum. But one thing is certain. A lot of people were talking about this game afterwards, and a lot of people didn't have nice things to say. So I asked Doc. I said, Doc, how do you shut out the noise to get ready for the next game? You know, the, the thing about the noise right now is it used to be back back in the good old days, there, there wasn't a whole lot of noise because there wasn't any way to relay that noise to all everybody. But now, now with kids, I mean, they got something in their hand the entire time and social media and all that that goes on. But you know what? I mean, it's easy for me because I don't ever look at it anyway. But that being said, the kids – you know, you just got to tell them that the one thing that's that's part of, you know, we try to educate these kids from the day they walk on campus about, you know, situations that they're going to be put in where they got to eliminate that noise and, you know, from whatever source it comes from and and uh, and go forward, you know. So, you know, we don't worry about it. these kids will be fine. You know, this is a resilient bunch or a great bunch of kids and that worked extremely hard. And, you know, I think, you know, I think and I'm not, I'm not talking about our game per se. And believe me, I, I'm, you, you think you've known me long enough. I, you know, I don't make excuses about anything. We got our ass beat. But that being said, I think when you look at games around the country, you got to be careful. You know, because there's a lot of a lot of people dealing with a lot of issues out there where they don't have their team playing, all right, uh, the entire year. And, and a lot of games you look at and say, "Wow, look at that score!" And again, I'm not talking about our team in any way, shape, or form. But you say, "Look at that score." You know, why did that, how in the world did that happen? Where well, you go back and you look at why. 
and they may not have had their offensive line in there. You know, they may not have had certain players that they've had the entire year that made a big difference in that team being successful. So 2020 is different. I mean, and we're dealing with it now. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of challenges out there. And and uh, even the day before the game, you're going to come up with at times with people that are going to have to go play that haven't played and didn't know they were going to play, you know, for obvious reasons. So, uh, you know, that being said, you just got to, you know, got to be positive and go forward. And, and that's what we're doing. So that's where Doc Holliday's at. He is unbothered by social media. He's looking ahead, trying to get this team ready for the next game against Charlotte. And one question that was asked about the situation, because you were out a couple of tackles. You were out a couple of key players there. I know you're going to say, well, Rice was out of players too. Well, yes, they were out some players also. Everyone was out players. But the chemistry for Marshall specifically on that line for Grant Wells, the question was asked, how different is it when you have a different setup? You're not going out there with your normal crew. Well, I think Grant's got total trust in those, I mean, those guys. I mean, Tariq's played a lot of football, and to be honest with you, he wasn't healthy, I mean, in that game. I mean, and, you know, he's probably a long shot maybe this week. So, you know, that being said, I mean, you got guys – and then the other thing is, Grant, and again – you got guys playing that probably under normal circumstances wouldn't be playing for not for a lot of teams. You know, you got a lot of guys that are saying, "My gosh, I got to get, I got to somehow find a way to play because we don't have people at that position." And so there's a lot of that going. There's a lot of things behind the scenes that are going on this year that we that nobody's ever had to deal with, and uh, you know nobody has all the answers. But uh, all I know is every kid we put in there, they 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 give it everything they possibly have, and they're doing everything they can to help this football team win and. And, uh, you know, Grant, that Grant's got the respect of all those guys. And, then, and again, that's not the reason that offensively we did what we did was because we had two new tackles in there. That wasn't, that wasn't the reason or because we didn't have Sheldon running back and the leadership he provides and a lot of different things going on. So, you know, that being said, we just got to get better. You know, like I said, we got to take care of the ball and get better, and, and, and we'll do that. Doc won't say it. I'll say it. That's a lot of leadership you lose with Sheldon Evans. Now, you have to overcome that. And I'm with Doc on that. You have to overcome that. You lose your your crew, your tackles, and you got to overcome that. And I'm with Doc on that as well. But I'll say it. Yeah, that's going to be a different look out there. It's going to be more difficult. And would the game have been different with Omer Ball out there and, and Sheldon Evans? Would it have been? I think so. But we won't know. That's in the past. We can't look to the past. We have to look ahead, though. And on that tackle situation, you're out a couple of key members of that line. What's the tackle situation look like? I'm a little concerned because I think I just got a a walk-on offer. I think Doc just asked me to to be a walk-on. I think Dave Wilson got asked to be a walk-on as well. To be quite blunt, uh, Paul Swan and Dave Wilson, we might be on that roster playing tackle on Friday against Charlotte. Maybe Ford, you mentioned, you know, Tariq got banged up late in that game too. What what is the tackle situation moving forward in the game? Is it is it gonna be one of those deals where possibly somebody has to move out or or we see some guys that step up that we haven't seen this year? Uh we'll see. I'm not sure right now, to be honest. You know, I'm not sure right now. And I don't know if any of you guys hit Paul, you look like you're the closest thing I see to a tackle. I don't know. <laughs> but uh maybe Dave. Dave's a little bigger than you are, maybe. I don't know. But uh yeah, and again, it's great. That's what we're dealing with, you know. I mean, and the other thing, I mean, well, and I don't want to go on a rant here, but you know, you, you go to practice and you're trying to practice with two tackles on the entire team, you know, which could happen, could be happening at some point, you know, and maybe is, you know. So, so hey, I'm going to be playing tackle for the Thundering Herd, Dave Wilson. He's going to be playing tackle for the Thundering Herd. I mean, that's a compliment right there. The da- that Doc thinks that we can play tackle. And that's a huge compliment there. And, of course, you look across that gallery view. If you're Doc Holiday and you're looking at Zoom right now, you look at that gallery view and you think, okay, I need a couple of guys that can play tackle. Um, Grant, not enough size there. Okay, I'm not going to go with Grant. Grant Trailer from the Herald Dispatch. I mean, he's quick, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm using him as tackle. Chuck Landon, are you, are you seriously going to say, Chuck Landon, hey, I need you to play tackle? Of course you're not. 
And then you look out at the list there, and you, you got a couple of, uh, of students uh, from the Parthenon. You're not going to ask them to play tackle, no. So it's going to be me and Dave Wilson. We're playing tackle here. We're the guys he's going to call upon. Uh, in all seriousness, though, he's got a point there. You, you lose more than just having a couple of guys out there on game day. Uh, practice, the ability to do some other things. Again, not using it as the excuse, but it does change the dynamic. Let's move on to uh, what Doc had to say about Charlotte's offensive skill players. That's going to be concerned this week. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, Harbison was you know leading rusher for, was it Northern Illinois, I think, a year ago? In, uh, in their program and over a thousand yards and Tucker's a big time player. I mean, I watched him, you know, had a chance to watch that Western Kentucky game, you know, yesterday. And he's just, he's a dynamic player. We saw that a year ago, you know, Brad, Brad recruited him and did an excellent job. And he's a, he's a skilled kid that can run and catch. And as I mentioned before, Reynolds, you know, creates a lot of issues for you, you know, especially when things break down. So uh, that'll be, a, Tucker will be a challenge for us along with Harbison and the running back. And they got some other skilled kids as well. The good news is Doc and the Thundering Herd already were in the progress in the process of getting ready for Charlotte. So you know, this isn't going to be uh, something you, you go into cold with a few days to go. So uh, that's the one thing that's pretty at least beneficial for the Thundering Herd. You were getting ready. Now, the same thing for Charlotte. I'm sure they were, you know, they've got some scout and some material that they were working on ahead of time as well. So both teams should be ready. The big question here. Grant Wells, 18 of 35, five interceptions, three sacks. Doc Holliday, when we were talking to him about Grant Wells, stressed that Doc Holliday is not concerned about Grant Wells. Go back and watch the tape. You know, we had opportunities, you know, to get the ball down the field and and uh, we just got to do better. And, and Grant will be the first one to tell you we got to make those throws and catches and do those things. So, you know, it, it's we, we just got to get better. You know, our receivers got to do a better job, and our entire offense has to do a better job. And we'll do that. I mean, it doesn't concern me. You know, one thing that Grant Wells does not concern me in any way, shape, or form. I mean, that kid played as well as any freshman I've ever been around for seven straight games. Uh, he's a tremendous kid. He's a tremendous uh, player. And the way he prepares for games and everything, the way he goes about his business, uh, he'll be he'll be great. He'll be great the next game he plays. There's no doubt in my mind about that. And uh, but it's not again. I'm, don't get me wrong. There's no way it's when you know the one thing we've done the last first seven games is we were the best team on the field, okay, and we won all seven of those games as a team. And when you lose one, you know we weren't the best team on the field, all right, in all three phases, and we're going to lose that one as a team as well. You know, so all three phases could have done a hell of a lot better job than what we did in that game. And we got to rally this week and get back to work and and make sure we're the best team on the field uh, when when Charlotte shows up here on Friday. You win as a team, you lose as a team. And I'm sure Grant's teammates, I'm sure the line, I'm sure everyone that deals with Grant, they've rallied around behind it. I mean, honestly – It's easy to say, look, you turn the ball over five times, you're not going to win. It's easy to say that. That's that's low-hanging fruit here. Yes, he threw the ball wrong many times, and he was picked off five times. And there were a lot of things that could have been done differently in this contest. But you can't blame it all on the quarterback. You can't blame it all on the line. You can't blame it all on, you know, a certain – strategy you can't blame it all it's team effort top to bottom did not play well the effort was not good the effort was there the effort was not good there is a distinction there is a different distinction about did they go out to play today yes they went out to play today they just did not play very well and finally Dave Wilson asked this question, uh, does the team have a chip on its shoulder? And Grant Trailer from the Herald Dispatch followed up. Uh, that's where we're at. Charlotte's coming in here. Does Marshall have a chip on its shoulder about last year? Yes. Big one. 
I don't need to say anything to this team about what they, they all know what happened. And Beckett reminded them all at practice yesterday as well. So, you know, they, they, they know, they know, they know what's at stake and they know what the game means. And, and uh, so, you know, they'll be, they'll be ready to play. I didn't edit the, um, the link between that response, by the way. Uh, I just put two questions together and uh, put the responses together. I mean, that was a long pause. I don't know if he was waiting for someone to ask another question or if he was just thinking about what your response would be. Listen to that. Yes. Big one. I mean, it's a huge, huge gap there. Yes, Marshall has a chip on its shoulder about Charlotte. Quick timeout. We will wrap it up. The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. That's going to do it for this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Special thanks to Tony Kemper, head coach of the Marshall women's basketball team, for joining me this afternoon. Tomorrow, we will look ahead to Marshall's matchup against the College of Charleston. We will talk about that. We'll get your phone calls in. And, of course, we have got basketball this week, football this week. We're going to have a full schedule. Heard on Wednesday, heard on Friday, heard on Sunday. Paul Swan in between all of that. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. Don't forget, coming up tonight, we got Monday Night Football right here on ESP at 94.1 and AM 930. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. West Virginia Metro News, I'm Jeff Jenkins. State Attorney General Patrick Morrissey says he...